Good evening, everyone. Today is Thursday, April the 22nd. It is 6.03 or 6.04, 6.03 p.m. Okay, we're going to start off with a sound saying coming from Psalms 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Yes, he is your strength. That's why he's called your anchor. Okay? That is why he is called your anchor. Something you can hold on to that you can't see. But you know that it's real. And you know that that hold that you have upon him is, is tight. And you can depend on it. Okay? Um, Exodus... 14.13 says, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Yes. Yes. When you have done all you can do, the next step is to what? Stand still and watch God. Be God. Just stand still. All right? Fear not while you're standing still. Right? Be courageous while you are standing still and because God has no need for your help. Okay? He can take care of all matters without our help. Okay? And regardless of how harsh the instructions God gives you, you must follow them to the letter. Regardless of what other people think about what you have done, you must follow God's word to the letter. Okay, because it's not people you need to please in this world. It is God himself. And if he gives you a set of instruction, regardless of how harsh it may seem, do it to the letter. Don't be like Saul. Okay, he gave Saul simple instructions. He told Saul why he wanted him to. To destroy the Amalekites. He said. Women. Children. Infant. Sucklings. Beast. All of it. Destroy it. Okay. Was it harsh? Of course. But so was the treatment. That the Amalekites gave the people of God. As they were passing by them. Okay. That was harsh as well. And God. He forgets nothing. All right? He sleeps not, and he forgets nothing. All right? Remember that. Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Period. All right. Um, oh, what did I do with it, brother? I think I did tamper with my... All right, well, I'll just put it right here. With my tablet, I think I do have a little bit more running time. So, I was telling you yesterday or a couple of days ago about judges today. How they are not um, the judges of the biblical time. They operate totally different. And in doing so, uh, the laws of God are not a part of their training. Okay, what is a judge? A judge is an official authorized to hear and to decide cases of law. That's one judge in the in the biblical time. Okay? That was an authorized person who knew the laws of God and was designated to be the judge of a hundred 50, so on, okay? A judge is also the head of the family in the biblical time. A judge was also the very head of the family. And we learned that in uh, Genesis 38, okay? When Judah was told that his daughter-in-law was pregnant, Okay, she had married his two of his sons and they both passed away. 
and she was sent back to her family. Well, he inadvertently went out and had an encounter with a woman who he perceived to be a prostitute. Well, that woman that he thought was a prostitute was actually his daughter-in-law disguised. So months later, she is found with child. And this is what he said. He was playing the role of a judge in the biblical time. This was acceptable. Okay, it says, and it came to pass, Genesis 38, 24, and it came to pass about three months later that it was told Judah saying, Tamara, thy daughter-in-law has played the hornet and also behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burned. Okay, so he was playing the role of a judge. And had he not discovered that the three items that he had given the woman that he had the encounter with, well, those three items was brought or sent to him and he remembered that he had made her a promise that he did not fulfill. So making her more righteous than himself. Okay. Now in the biblical time, Moses uh was the first one to train judges to judge small cases okay because at first he was judging from morning to night all right but his father-in-law came and saw this thing going on and gave him some good advice it was now in the biblical time you could talk to your sons or your daughters give them advice and they would heed to it not today in this world today your children just because they have had children just because they have a household just because they are working class uh citizens they think that they can match you in experience and wisdom. So you can't speak to them now. You can speak to some, but you can't speak to a, a majority of them. Okay, why? Because they lack wisdom, period. Another thing, because they have no respect for their elders, period. And sometimes you do have to remind them that you are the parent. All right, so... In the biblical time, he was told by his father-in-law how to systematically change things so that it would not be so heavy upon him, all right? And in eight, uh, Exodus 8, 13, 18, 13, it says, And it came to pass on the morning that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. He did this all day long. Okay, Exodus eighteen twenty one. Moreover, thou should provide, I skipped a few, out of all the people, able men. Okay, first qualification, such as fear God, number one. Men of truth, number two. Hating coverage, number three. And place such over them to be rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. Okay, Exodus 18.22. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that even every great matter they shall bring unto thee. But every small matter they shall judge, so shall it be easier for thyself, and thy, and they shall bear the burden with thee. Okay, so in the biblical time, the most important thing about a judge was that he needed to fear God, period. In today's world, he don't even need to know God. Okay, and this is why you have such a... Uh, 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 uh,